Hey, what's up everybody? It's Justin, editor-in-chief of Rapzilla.com. And uh, this is it. This is the final episode of Community During Chaos, episode 25. Um, I'm going to bring it back next year, but with the holidays here, I have not missed a week. This is 25 straight weeks, 75 interviews. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm tired. Um, and it takes a lot to interview that many people. There's been a ton of chaos and a ton of community uh, learned throughout this year. So I hope that you've all learned and walked in someone else's shoes with me as I have. We have Jeannie Ortega, who is a singer, a reporter, um, an actress. She's got an incredible story. And, uh, and actually, we're, we're kind of fitting a theme along with this episode. Um, Jeannie is going to be on here to talk about adoption. And then next is... On Beat Music producer Ob, who of course does our Critique Fridays. Um, Ob is going to talk about being a stepfather and welcoming kids that weren't his into his life, and now being a father in that way. So those are the first two things we have in common. And then the third one, we're going to have Phil the Voice and Vince Serrano. Um, Phil the Voice is a rapper. Vince is um, in charge of Outsiders Clothing, and they are doing Stop the Traffic tour to help bring awareness to stop sex trafficking of boys. Usually we hear about women or young girls that are being trafficked, um, but they, their initiative is to bring awareness to the boys who are being trafficked. So children are the theme of this entire episode. Um, and yeah, so it should be great. Uh, Jeannie and OB are good friends of mine. I've known for a long time. I've never spoken to Phil, but I've posted his music all the time. And I've seen Vince, uh, Vince's work with the Outsiders clothing brand. So this is a dope way to end the whole series out. And then I will be back at some point in the new year. And maybe we'll chat at the end of this whole thing. How are long, you? Long time no see. I know, right? We, we, we threw, a, we threw a, a, a podcast in there like a year or so back to talk. But, man, I haven't, I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, so... I'll just very briefly, um, everyone, this is Jeannie Ortega, singer from Brooklyn, New York, Puerto Rican, always representing. Uh, she's now in Florida, but we also used to work together um, at a, another company at, for Briefcast. Um, we were assistant editors together. That seemed like a lifetime ago. It was five years ago. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, we made a lot of... I'm going to adjust this as I'm talking to you. We made a lot of really cool memories, did amazing stories, got. On YouTube and whatever you were seeing her face. And I was like behind the scenes helping stuff <laughs> out. But um, I, I had to figure out how to do this for myself. But anyway, you do Jeannie, a great job. Thank you. Hey, she's only saying that because we're live, but no. I see it. I see a ton of Puerto Rican flags. I'm I'm all about that. <laughs> Whippa. All right. So, Jeannie, yes. I do not want to waste any more time. I want to talk to you about important things. So, first off, I want to ask the same question I ask everyone. 2020 has been a year of absolute madness and craziness between uh, COVID, um, the civil rights things that are happening. Now you throw the elections in there. Uh, now COVID's kind of coming, not that it ever left, but it's, it's rearing its head, an ugly head again. So what, what has your 2020 been like? You know what? I hate to say this because I know it's been a hard one for so many people, but I got to say I've been blessed. You know, God, you know, it's, it's allowed me to really reflect on um, just how good God is, you know, to me, I've, I've, even though churches have shut down, I've mm -hmm. managed to stay close to God. Um, you know, uh, I also feel like I see a lot of people's true colors. So, you know, everyone was like 2020 vision, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and like, messed you know, that up. Yeah. But they thought it was going to be, you know, whatever, like for their life. 
If anything, yeah. I think 2020 has been very revealing, exposing. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people's true colors. I've seen my own true colors, you know. Um, yeah. And it's been it's been a beautiful journey for me. I feel God near. Um, I think it's important for all of us to know how to cultivate God for ourselves without a church, without a hype man, basically, um, because we're supposed to have that direct connection. And, mm -hmm. and I've been blessed. I, my bills are paid. You know, God is still providing. And I know that's not the yeah. case for everybody. So I know that I'm very blessed and I'm just really thanking God for his goodness and how, how he's kept me. Yeah, and I think that's important because I've I've had that conversation with a few different people on the show where they're like, I'm really afraid to say it. And like 2020 has been one of the best years of my life or like, you know, I've made the most moves in 2020 or I've gained the most success or, you know, it wasn't that bad for me. Um, and I think that is important too. Like, obviously there there's people who are going through things, but you should be able to celebrate and praise God and be happy for your victories in life. Yeah. Um, and you should be able, even if you're going through a tough time, be able to celebrate and have joy with people who are experiencing good things. And at the same time, I do want to say, I have had um, four deaths this year. Two of them, my wow. grandfather's. So my husband's grandfather, who I was so close to, and yeah. I'm still grieving. And that was at the top of this year. We buried him in Grenada. And then my grandfather in August, which Sorry. I can't even think about it because it's so painful, but they both lived very long lives. They were both the mm -hmm. patriarchs of our family and they left incredible legacies to look towards. Um, but, you know, in the midst of my grief, I do. I like you said, I'm looking at the good and giving God thanks for sure. Right. And I mean, there's there's going to be ups and downs of every year, too. Of course, but if, but 2020, it just seems like, man, like one week after another, it's like, well, all right, what else? What else is going to change in the news? Um, but again, celebrating those victories, grieving when you need to grieve, but just just being like, you know what? We're almost out of this year. So we've got we've gotten through this year yeah. um, and, uh, you know, hoping for a great 2021. So. I mean, <laughs> just give us something. <laughs> just give us a little something. Um, so during this season, what have you been able to do, whether it be, you know, with your church or your platform on your own, in your own local community to like inspire change or encourage people? Um, well, I, you know, me and my husband, we have a digital, it's like a, it's an international digital ministry in a sense, mm -hmm. but we, we meet, you know, um, here, yeah. whoever's local, but we've, you know, we were determined to use everything that we have to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus. Right. And when we left New York, I had such a big following in New York. So moving to Orlando kind of forced me into a place like, God, you moved me to this place where I don't know anyone really. Mm -hmm. And um, you want us to keep doing the ministry. So obviously you have something unique for us. And then yeah. I know it's going to sound insane, but it was really Denzel Washington. I was on a trip. <laughs> I was on a trip for work to interview Denzel Washington for a movie that he did. And we were sitting in a circle, it was a round table. And um, for some reason, he was like locked into me. And I think it was because I was young. He can tell I was hungry for God you know, and he's now coming into his own, like, authority and God and, and finally yeah. answering the call, I feel like, you know, after 60 some years. Um, and I asked him a question about the, the millennial generation and, and just about the importance of faith in God and all that. And he literally turned to me, he laid his hand on my shoulder and he started to prophetically speak into me. And wow. basically told me, you have to reach your millennial generation any way that you can. And God had already been telling me that same thing. Use social media, use YouTube, use live streams, use everything that you can use it to bring me glory. And when mm -hmm. Denzel Washington literally confirmed that word for me, and, I, and it was crazy, it was wild, it was like, I was like, wow, Lord, you're talking to me. And you used freaking Denzel Washington to do it. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a flex. That's Lord, a flex. Right? Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so, I'm, I'm, I feel blessed. But maybe, 
I don't know, maybe I wouldn't have listened if it was somebody else. But um, yeah, it was it was powerful. So we've just been doing a lot of stuff like this. We do digital Bible studies. We do digital worship experiences. Um, we're basically discipling, empowering, and equipping people from all over the country. And awesome. even some places in the world, like India, we have a ministry there with 20 pastors that we're just kind of discipling and having them go spread the gospel, you know? And, and yeah. stay on fire. I feel like there's a lot of lukewarmness in Christianity. See, I was, you didn't share my story, but I was converted. Like I didn't, I was saved. Mm -hmm. I was radically saved from being a pop star to, to really surrendering to Jesus. So when mm -hmm. that happens, you know, that's a, that fire, like it's, you get, it shouldn't go out. And if it does, then, you know, that's on me, but I'm, I'm yeah. still trying to do that with everybody that's in our lives. So, did you see someone's comment? Hang, wait, what did it say? Hang on, let me just pick that name up off the floor for you, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> um, name drop. So, um, but you you were already doing this pre COVID, right? So, I was. Yeah. so has anything actually really changed much from what you guys were doing? Well, now a lot more people are like, we want to, we want to be a part of your ministry. You know, we want right. to, because I guess they're seeing the importance of having community, even if you can't meet together in person and, you know, right. we're still doing that. We're still having community. We're still really discipling. Also too, I mm -hmm. think a lot of churches are very good at preaching, um, but sometimes the discipling part it's, and it's hard. Doing life with people is so messy and it's so hard. So I get it. I understand why a lot of people, you know, a lot of even ministries don't get that involved in people's lives. But for us, we feel like God has put us in people's lives so that we can help cultivate whatever it is that they have to do in this world for his name. So we get yeah. it. We get all up in it. <laughs> nice. Nice. So is, is there a plan to extend that even further in the new year or or you know once the world is seemingly normal again like what else what more can you do for me i'm really like i, I want to we want to really open up a facility um you know because we're like a para church we're not like a sunday service church we're more like boots yeah. on the ground you know helping the orphans helping the widows like yeah, we want to yeah, go yeah. out on the street and like really link arms with people. So for me, a facility that can actually help people. Um, and then, you know, also we can do discipleship classes, courses. We do a lot of stuff like that digital. I like to do that more. So, you know, we're praying, listen, if it's God's will, he'll foot the bill, right? He'll pay for all. <laughs> and, um, you know, but at, at the end of the day, like if it's just one person that I'm reaching through a live stream, I'm going to do that with all my heart. So. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And now you you mentioned as part of the people you help, you know, orphans or or people in need. So one of the things you you shared to me, you know, before we came on here, that is you're looking to adopt, which in itself is a is a crazy thing. It really takes a special type of person to do that. Mm -hmm. So where did that that heart for adoption come about? And can you maybe talk about that a little bit? Sure. I've always wanted to adopt. I've always had that in my heart since a little girl. I don't even know why. I really don't. Mm -hmm. um, God must have put it in there, you know, because even my mom, she tells me, I've always remembered you wanted to adopt, you know, and I have. Um, and then I got married and my husband was kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, let's start our <laughs> own legacy and, and let's see what happens. And um, we actually waited a long time before we, you know, attempted to even start our own legacy with like our own kids um, about seven years, I believe, into marriage. And then um, we tried and I got pregnant and the baby didn't live in my womb. And then we tried again and the same thing happened. And then again, and the same thing happened. Wow. I think after the second time, though, my husband realized you know, what if I am missing something? Like, what if God is telling us to adopt? You know, and, and mm -hmm. for, you know, I think a lot of times us as people, we get caught up in how we think it should normally happen, right? The normal way it should happen. Right. But for us, it could totally be the other way. Like, we might be 
how you know you might have to adopt before the natural thing happens or whatever or it's just not yeah. meant to be that way and that's fine I, i'm totally fine with that um in the adoption process now though like going through it we're officially licensed to adopt in this country 